this uh, infusion in, you know, kind of a credit into our account that we can spend any way we want of time. And the Lord says that we have two choices with our time. Either we please him with what we do, or we don't please him. It's very interesting. So our time allocation is either pleasing to him or not. And uh, so it's very exciting that he's given us time to redeem today. But let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray that you would help uh, us to understand your word. Uh, Your promise to us is that you will open our eyes to behold wonderful things from your word. So we ask you to fulfill your word and do that today. For Jesus' sake, amen. Uh, This is our project. So many of you came up. I would rather answer once to all of you than 52 times to individuals the same thing. So the project, the devotional method project, in your class syllabus, one half or so of the grade is you doing 10 chapters. And I had so many people say, how do you do that and everything? Well, I've shown you this sheet. It has three parts, but I'll illustrate it like this. This is my Bible. I took a picture of it. And this is where I was recently reading. That's Isaiah 40. And I highlighted a few things as I I did this devotional method on that chapter. So I highlighted the exciting verses. And then anything that was I didn't want to forget, I would kind of write uh, into the margins of uh, or between the verses. And then, this is what I wrote. So here's today. I I did this this morning for you. Isaiah 40. Here's my title. The Living Word of God. You say, how did you get that? I just made it up myself. See, that's right. Don't you guys just make up your titles for every chapter? Isn't that something that you do? You're titling every chapter. Does someone tell you what the title is? Okay, so see, we're tracking. You've already done that. Then here are the lessons I found. Again, I spent a whole half hour doing this. You have to do 10 chapters. You have to decide how much you want to invest in this. I take at least a half hour because I want to do this for every single chapter of the Bible, and I want to do it, in fact, I have already done it for every chapter of the Bible many times, and I want to keep doing it until they take my glasses away in the hospital and my Bible, you know, and they strap you down and put tubes in you. So I want to be doing this the rest of my life, okay? So you don't have to take a half hour. But I took a half hour, and look, look what I found. In just looking at this chapter, I've read that chapter 100 times before this morning. I've already read it 100 times. Yet it was so exciting. That's the power of the Word of God. Because when you open your Bible, it's like answering your phone. God's voice This is his word, so his voice is written down, and as you read his word, you hear his voice. So guess what? The little cabin they have me in is right next to Scroon Lake. Isn't that Scroon Lake that's right here? It's like the little end of it? So I was right next to Scroon Lake this morning, and I could hear the voice of God. Now, where were you all this morning when you heard the voice of God? In other words, where did you read his word? Where did you bow before him and ask him to open your eyes and reveal himself to you? Because wherever you were, you were hearing the voice of God. Now that's fascinating because it really is helpful in witnessing. Remember the lady I told you about yesterday? She said, you know God? You know what I could have really done to shake her up? I said, yeah, I heard his voice this morning. She would have gone, what? You have to clarify that or else they'll think you're, you know, delusional and walking around hearing voices. I would explain that I hear his voice when I read his words. So here's what I found. In fact, I wrote everything I found. Wow. Jesus, when he came, revealed in human form what the glory of God looks like. That's what it says in verse 5. If you look at Isaiah 40 and verse 5, that that it's, it's all about the coming of Christ and John the Baptist heralding his coming. Then in verses 6 to 8, I, I wrote, we're reminded that we as humans are passing and transient. We're like mowed grass. I mean, I'm going to last on the big picture about as long as the grass lasts when you mow it. You know how it's all green, and as soon as it falls over and the sun gets on it, it kind of turns this light color, and then the wind blows it away. That's how God says humans, we're so fragile, we're like mowed grass. So I wrote that down. Then verse 22, I mean, look at that. Some of you, I don't even know if you've settled this in your mind yet. Look at verse 22. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth 
and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. That's Isaiah 40, 22. You know what that is? That's a declaration of God as the creator. And it says that right now, God is so close to the earth. I mean, he's not off somewhere, you know, 16.4 billion light years away. He's right here. He's sitting above the circle of the earth. In fact, Job actually says the earth turns like clay to a seal. What does that mean? Well, they used to sign their names with a rolling pin device. They had carved on this little cylinder their signature, and it had a little handle, and they would roll it across the clay. And that's how they'd sign their name back in, in the ancient, the Mesopotamian cultures, across the clay. They called it cuneiform, and they, they made them tablets, and you know, all that stuff from, you know, everything you're hearing from Dr. Davis. But the word for turning his clay to the seal means that that little roller revolves. So Job says the earth is revolving on an axis, it's rotating actually is the correct word, on an axis. So see, the Bible's really very scientific. So he sits above the circle of the earth, all of us are little, and it says that the way he created the universe, which explains everything, the earth was here before the stars. And it says he unrolled the stars and the galaxies. You see what it says in verse 22? Like you spread out a tent. You guys ever gone camping, you know, and your dad rolled up the tent real tight and stuffed it back into that, or you did, but then you pull it out, or a sleeping bag, and you let go of it, and it goes, it unrolls real quick? That's how God said he created the universe. He, right here, on the fourth day of creation, he went, and he unrolled the stars and the galaxies and everything out there. So all of their light actually started here, and he cast them out there. That sure explains, I mean, all of you that are in physics can understand what I just said. Everybody wonders, how we're, why aren't we seeing more new stars every day? It should be that a couple more show up every day, right? Because depending on how many billion whatevers they are away, their light should finally get to us, especially if over the however many billion years they've been you know, forming out there, we'll see more, but we're not. There aren't new stars. There are about 8,000 in the sky that, that everyone since humanity's been on the earth has seen the same ones. You understand it's all explained. So I wrote that down. Then verse 26, God wants me to meditate on his power. What I just said in the last five minutes, if you're even listening, that's a pretty important person to be connected to that, that is the one that made all that. And he wants to connect to us and he wants to talk to us. So I said he wants me to meditate on his power. And then... Verse 31, the famous verse in this chapter, you know, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings like eagles, all that. I wrote, he knows life is hard, that I get tired and weak and fainting at times, and he wants me to rest in his strength and pass through, even rise above my struggles by following him. See why it takes a half hour, you have to sit and think about it and think of what to say. And then I wrote a prayer. Now, that's, this is all you have to do for a chapter, and you can do it as abbreviated as you want. I would not say you can make it as big as you want because it'll keep you from doing all of your other work. I don't want this to be you know, the huge thing that, that saps all your time, but it's a wonderful investment. And I wrote a prayer. Oh, Lord, today I'll pause and reflect on your majesty. And because I trust your plan is so much better than mine, I ask for you, dear Lord, to control and lead me. And finally, I want to wait on you right now. And by faith, feel that I'm going forth with your strength. For Jesus' sake, amen. So there, that's the project. And you have to do that for 10 of the chapters of Revelation. You have to write a title, which you've already done. So you're one-third of the way through half of your assignment. Then you have to look for stuff. And you just look, and whatever you find, you write down. But it's, it's not... It's principles and truths and applications. It, it's not just facts. What you're trying to say is, uh, you know, because Jesus did that, this, this, this. It's, it's learning how to apply the Bible to your life, and then you write a prayer and ask him to do it. So there we go. After 10 minutes, I explained the project. Um, and what I just explained is online. And by the way, everything I say is online. 
and it's all on YouTube. And I have this incredible uh, uh, group of young people around me. I remember in 2014, someone told me to go on YouTube, and I said, I thought YouTube was bad. I mean, I didn't know what YouTube was. Even the name, YouTube, what is that? You know what I mean? It was like watching TV or something. So I said, it's crazy. They said, no, you should open it. And my son, he said, Dad, you preach too long. My kids tell me that. He said, for the modern generation, he says, how about if I cut your sermons up into little pieces? I said, what do you mean? He said, on YouTube, they like little three, five minute things. I said, oh, great. And he did. And I mean, they're watched millions of times because they're this short. And, and kids like them. 